So, we were talking about localization. Uh, this is a process where you know from a given ring we obtain a new ring. So, far we had seen many other ways of obtaining uh, new rings that is by taking quotients, you know, adjoining variables and so on. This is another way of uh, obtaining new rings by inverting certain number of elements. So, uh, let me just quickly recall what we were doing. Uh, let S be a multiplicatively closed set. closed subset of A. Okay. Then uh, define uh, A is equal to B T in uh, A cross S. Uh, if A T minus B S. This is 0 for some u in S. We saw that you know this is kind of definition equivalent to the uh, when we were uh, when we construct rational numbers from integers, but then we realized in rational numbers these a t minus b s is 0 is equivalent to saying a t minus b s u is 0, because it is an integral domain. In, in, in integers, this and both are equal. But in the in general, what we want is we want this is same as a u s u, right. We do not want to distinguish between them, right. We want this to be same. So, therefore, we added this condition for the uh, in, in general this and this are not the same. So, we added this condition. So, this is an equivalence uh, this is an equivalent uh, equivalence relation. the set of all equivalence class uh, is denoted by S inverse A equivalence class of A comma S is denoted by as in the case of rationals. So, I have this new object S inverse A. Now, from Z we constructed Q and Q turned out to be a ring field and so on. So, one can ask whether this is indeed a ring when we constructed A mod i, we defined a multiplication addition and multiplication and said well this is still a ring with respect to these operations. So, in this case if I take uh, you know collection of all equivalence classes, can we define an addition and a uh, multiplication and get this as a ring. So, there are you know, obvious ways of defining these two, right. So, let us define addition and multiplication on uh, S inverse A. How would you like to define? I have by so, A by S plus B by T A T plus B S divided by S T. So, this is the definition okay, 
for any a by a by s b by t in s inverse a and a by s times b by t a b divided by s t. Okay. Now, we have defined it as you know this is an equivalence class, right? It is a collection of elements, not a single element, right? A by S is same as A u by S u for any u in S. So, the question is whether this definition depends on the representative that we choose. Suppose, instead of A s, I choose another representative which is say for example, in, instead of 1 by 2, I choose 2 by 4. Will this be same or different? One needs to attend to this question, right. That is, these two definitions are well defined. We need to prove that the definitions are well defined. For this, first of all, note that see I have to prove that this is well defined, which means even if I choose different representatives, the sum remain the same. Okay. So, if I prove that I choose a different representative for A by S, that is I choose A prime by S prime, which is equal to A by S, then for any B by T, a by s plus b by t is same as a prime by s prime plus b by t. If I prove that, we are through. Okay? We only need to prove for one because then you can next you can handle the other one and prove. You know, you choose any two representative different representatives for this as well as this, you still get the same summation. So, first let us prove that. I okay? will prove this and leave this as an exercise. So, let a prime by s prime be equal to a by s. Okay. We want to show that a prime by s prime plus b by t is same as a by s plus b by t. Sorry. Okay. Or in other words, what do we have? Uh, what does that we need to prove? That is, we need to prove that a prime t minus b s prime is same as a t plus b s. Oh, that is not enough. So, I yeah, sorry, I need to prove this s prime t s t. Oh, here plus. Yeah. And this is how do you I mean how do you prove this? That is so to prove that this that is when is this true? Yeah, this is this happens if a a prime t plus b s prime times s t minus a t plus b s s prime t whole u is zero for some. U in S. Now, what we know is that A prime by S prime is same as A by S. A prime by S prime is same as A by S implies that there exists some 
let us call it uh, okay, let us call it u, let us see whether this u is same as this u. Okay, let us uh, uh, take a u prime. Let us uh, there exists u prime such that u prime a prime s minus a s prime is 0. So, this is 0 implies that u prime times a prime s t square oh I forgot uh, this minus b s s prime t plus b s s prime t uh, plus sorry minus there should be a minus right a s prime t square this is 0. I have just multiplied by t square and added and subtracted this guy. But this is same as what we have there, right? Multiply this by t square, so u is same as u prime, okay. So this implies this implies uh, uh, a t a prime t plus b s prime by s prime t this is equal to a t plus b s divided by s t. So, this says that the addition is well defined. Verifying that multiplication is well defined is even here. So, I will leave that to you uh, to complete. So, verify that the multiplication is well defined. Okay. So, therefore, S inverse A, well there are more properties to be uh, verified, the addition is associative, <coughs> the addition is associative, multiplication is is distributive over the addition and the multiplication is also associative. So, I will just uh, write here and multiplication are associative, it is distributive over the addition and so on. So, therefore, S inverse A is a ring with rest ok. Well, uh, there is what is the uh, yeah what is the identity? Uh, what is the additive identity? 0 by 1 that is I mean 0 by 1 is one representation, we can have many representations right. If you take any 0 by t that is going to be same as 0 by 1 right. So, any 0 by t will be a uh, will be a representative for the additive identity. Uh, it has additive inverse all these verifications I leave uh, to you to you know do it and convince yourself that this is indeed a commutative ring with with respect to the 
addition and multiplication defined So, we started by saying that you know construction of q from z and so on. So, let us look at that as the first example. So, how do you what is q? I mean can you think of q as s inverse a for some s in z and a equal to z? Huh? So, yeah q is S inverse A for A equal to Z and S equal to yeah one can in fact one can think of uh, take N or take you know yeah yeah need not necessarily uh, S and um, Z need not have if if A has then S inverse A will have because well we are uh, we are looking at we are always looking at uh, I mean, uh, at least for this course we are looking at commutative rings with identity and our uh, uh, multiplicatively closed sets will contain identity. One is part of S for any uh, multiplicatively closed sets by you know our convention. So, therefore, in, in our situation they are all there. Okay. So, this is uh, one first example. Uh, okay. So, let us look at uh, you know Let us look at one or two uh, more examples. Suppose I take, so my A is Z itself okay, and S is 1, 2, 2 square, 2 cube all powers of 2. Okay. What is what is S inverse A? Huh? Dyadic rational. So this is this is one ring which is kind of important in the in number theory, this class of rings. So this is set of all m by two power n m in z and n uh, bigger than equal to 0, n in z plus uh, z non negative. Yes, yeah. So, in fact, here we do not use any property of 2. So, therefore, one can instead of 2, I can even take any p p square p cube and so on p adic integers okay so this is p power n this has you know even better structure okay uh, i'll come back to that a little late okay So, let us take A to be any ring and S to be 1 comma 0. Okay. This is a multiplicative set by definition 1 is there if 2 elements are there their product is also there. So, this is there. Now, what is S inverse A? If I take let us let us look at let us take an element a by t in S inverse a. Okay. 
what do you expect this ring to be? We are trying to invert 0, right? We are trying to invert 0. We see what are the uh, I mean what is uh, I mean observe something that in S inverse A all the elements of S are units, right? All the elements of S are units. In periodic integers, you take any p power n. So, p power n by 1 times 1 by p power n is 1. So, therefore, all the elements in S are units here. What we are getting is a new ring with all these elements of S being units. So, we here when we have this, we are expecting a ring with all the elements here being units that means 0 is a unit when will 0 be a unit in a ring it is a 0 ring that is what we should be expecting right we should expect that this is 0. So, what is that we need to suppose I take a by t I want to say that this is same as 0 okay. can we can I say that this is equal to 0 by 1. How do you say that this is equal to 0 by 1? If I can find a u in S such that u times a is 0, can you find a u in S? 0, right. So, therefore, this is trivially satisfied. So, every a by t is equal to 0 by 1, which means there is only one element S inverse a is 0. So, this let a by t then 0 times a is 0 which means a by t is same as 0 by 1 and that implies that s inverse a is there is only 1 if 0 is there in, in the multiplicative set then s inverse a is 0. Conversely, suppose s inverse a is 0. So, uh, let me uh, if s inverse a is 0, then what kind of conclusion you want to make? So, let me uh, write that 0 is in s. Okay. Try to prove that. I will I leave it to you uh, to check. Okay. Yes, correct. A not equal to zero. Now let's look at one, some of the properties of uh, the localization. We will see few more examples. Uh, maybe I'll take one more example. Take a to be z six and s to be 1 3 is this is this multiplicative set 3 times 3 in z 6 is 3 again right. So, 3 power n is 3 for any n bigger than equal to 1. So, therefore, this is a multiplicative set what are the elements of s inverse a 0 by 1 0 by 1 and 0 by 3 they are the same okay so we don't have to write separate 1 by 1 okay uh, they are all they, they, i mean i'm not going to write bars here you know they are all in z6 1 by 2 1 by 3 there are many elements ok. So, le let me not uh, list them let us let us look at one or two you know uh, elements here ok. I have let us look at 2 by 1 in this this is a slightly different variation of this see here 0 times a is 0. Now, 
if I have if A is a 0 divisor, can you see here 2 by 1 this is same as 0 by 1 why is it so 3 times 2 is 0 3 is there in S. So, therefore, 2 by 1 is 0, 2 by 1 is 0, therefore, 4 by 1 is 0. Okay. So, there are more you know elements here which do not seem like 0, but they are actually 0. Right. 2 by 1 to start with we do not expect, we do not think that it is 0, so, but this is 0. So, this you know example says something more. First of all, there exists a map in general, there exists a map, let us call it f from a to s inverse a, f of a equal to a by 1. This is a map from a to s inverse a, is this only a map, is it something more? is it a homomorphism both are rings right a plus b will be a plus b by 1 which is same as a by 1 plus b by 1 a b will be again a b divided by 1 which is a by 1 times b by 1. So, therefore, this is a ring homomorphism f is a ring homomorphism. What more? Is this an injective map? Here is an example, right? This is not injective, okay. In general, F is F is not injective. Now, suppose I have a map. Uh, suppose I have a homomorphism. Let so this is this is called universal mapping property of uh, uh, the localization. So now S inverse A is called localization of A with respect to the multiplicative set S. One universal mapping property of the localization is the following. Yes. Yes. Uh, units in A. Yeah, so let me uh, write this as an exercise. <coughs> if S is a subset of A cross, uh, set of all units, then S inverse A what would be S inverse A? Okay. Try to see what, uh, okay. what would this be? We are trying to in invert elements which are already units there and we are not trying to invert anything more. So, let us explore what this is you and try to develop some idea and try to prove it. Okay. Okay. So, let f be a, uh, so let me, uh, let g be a ring homomorphism. such that g of s is a unit for all s in s. So, a b a uh, s is a multiplicative set in a, where s is 
a multiplicative set. Then, so what we have is, I have a map from A to B, this is G, I have a map from A to S inverse A, this is F, so this is G, this is F. Then there exists a unique homomorphism H from S inverse S inverse A to B such that the diagram is commutative or in other words H composite F is G. See what it says is simple. If I have a ring homomorphism such that all the images of G, uh, all the images of uh, elements of S are units here. See, they are all units here. So, you have a natural extension from here to here. Okay. If they are units here, then you have a natural extension. That is all what it says. It's so, we have to just simply define a homomorphism and then prove the uniqueness. There is a very natural way of defining a homomorphism, right. I want to say uh, H of A by S G A times will I want it to be G S. Ah, so, see what we want is basically A by S should go to I mean A by S should go to G A by G S that is what we the natural ring I mean extension from here to here would be, but what is meant by G A by G S it is basically G A times G S inverse. So, this is then H is a, a ring homomorphism. I will you know verify there are uh, easy ways to verify this I will leave it to you to do that. H is a ring homomorphism and what is uh, H composite F of an element A? F of A is A by 1. Okay. So, H of f of a is h of a by 1, this is g a times g of 1 is 1, we are, we are having uh, maps between commutative rings with identity. So, therefore, this is 1. So, this says that h composite f is g what we need to prove is this part. Now, this is not only that, this is unique. Once you define G, this is unique. Okay. So, suppose there exists. So, let G prime uh, H prime be any be a homomorphism from uh, S inverse A to B such that H prime composite F is G. I want to say that H prime is equal to H or in other words H prime of A by S is same as H of A by S for every S. Now, let us look at what would be H prime of A by S. Okay. I can write this as H prime of you know A by 1 times H prime of 1 by S. 
right. Now, what is h prime of a by 1? This is a by 1 is f of f of a. So, this is h prime of f of a which is g of a. Now, what is h prime of 1 by s? Same as h prime of s by 1 inverse. See 1 by s inverse of s by 1. 1 by s is same as s by 1 inverse because their product is 1. Okay. But therefore, now what is f of s by 1 inverse? Sorry. Uh, so, therefore, h prime of s by 1 inverse h prime is ring homomorphism. Therefore, h prime of s by 1 inverse is same as h prime of s by 1 inverse, but h prime of s by 1 is h prime of f of s, h prime of f of s is g of s this is h prime of f of s inverse which is g s inverse. So, what have you obtained here? This is g a times g s inverse and that is precisely what is h of a by s. Okay. Therefore, this is unique. Is this clear? There exists a unique homomorphism which takes a by s to g a times g s inverse. So, now this is you know this is a universal mapping property of uh, uh, the localization and there is much more to it. This defines the localization. See, I have this map f a to s inverse a. Okay. So, if so, I have these properties. Okay. Uh, there exists f such that if s is in s, then f of s is a unit. obviously that is how we have constructed right. Now, if f of a is 0 what is meant by f of a is 0? a by 1 is 0 or in other words there exists u in s such that u times a is 0. And third one is every element of A S inverse A is of the form F A times F S inverse, right. Every element is of the form A by S, which I can write it as A times 1, uh, A by 1 times 1 by S, that is of this form. Now, the surprising thing is that this defines the uh, localization uniquely in the sense suppose I have a no this need not be subjective is of the form f a times f s inverse. Yeah. Huh. Every element see what is this map? This map is a going to a by 1 that can be far from being surjective. For example, z 2 uh, q, 
but every element is of the form f a times f s inverse. See the thing is that s inverse need not be in a when we talk about s inverse that need not exist in a. See every element in q looks like m by n m times n inverse, but that n inverse is not here. Okay. This, this I cannot write it as a s inverse because this need not exist in a at all. Okay. Now, suppose I have a ring homomorphism which satisfies these three properties that is let g from a to b be a ring homomorphism such that for s in s g of s is a unit in b okay second is if g of a is 0 then there exists u in s such that u times a is 0. Third one every element of b is of the form g a g s inverse. Then what we are saying is that b is nothing but s inverse a. So, how do we uh, write that in algebraic terms? Then there exists a unique isomorphism h from s inverse a to b. So, I have uh, such that so, I have a to b a to s inverse a this is h this is f this is g such that h composite f is g. Okay. How do you prove this? Again, we have to define a, an isomorphism from a, a map from S inverse A to B. That is, I need to define uh, H of uh, A by S as something. Yeah, G A times G S inverse. Then this is a ring homomorphism. Let's you know. I'll uh, assume that you have to check that. Then H is a ring homomorphism. H is. What do, what does the second third property say? Every element of B is of the form G A times G S inverse. Therefore, H is. Yeah, three third property implies that H is surjective. Right? Now, what does the second property say? We want to check whether it is injective. So, suppose H of A by S 0, which means G A G S inverse is 0, but what is G S inverse? G S is a unit in in B, therefore, G A G S inverse is 0 will imply G A is 0, but the second property says that there exists U such that U times A is 0. That means, A by S is 0, that means F is injective. Okay. So, if H of A by S is 0, that implies G A G s inverse is 0 that implies g a is 0 since g s is unit in b that implies by 
<coughs> second property there exists u in S such that u times a is 0 and that precisely says that a by S is 0 in S inverse A that implies F is injective. So, therefore, F is an isomorphism yeah sorry not F H is injective. Therefore, H is an isomorphism uniqueness can be verified in the same manner. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, from the previous proposition, one can prove that it is unique. Okay. So the localization is defined precisely using these three. We will see more properties of localization later. 